Thank you for uh, joining me today. My name is Katrina Carol Haskins, and I am uh, presenting live from Drexel University. Uh, I'm an art therapist and a PhD candidate here at Drexel, and today I'm going to share a bit about my arts-based research on painting in virtual reality. Okay, so some key points for today. Um, I'm going to share how arts-based methods can be used to explore art making and virtual reality. I'm going to share some of my findings in terms of unique qualities of virtual painting through an app called CyberPaint, and then some potential directions for future research. So starting off, um, for those who are not familiar, arts-based research, uh, there are a lot of different definitions that I can go under and the methods used for this approach are still um, being shaped. So. Uh, my work is informed by art therapists that are doing arts-based research, um, Nancy Gerber and Sean McNiff and others. And um, in this approach, artistic inquiry becomes a critical source of knowledge at every stage of research. So to break that down a little bit, um, I generated my own artwork in virtual reality and also in traditional arts media or plastic arts, as I'm going to refer to them from here on out, um, as sources of data and then I reflected on that, wrote reflective journal memos, and um, I also used art making to further analyze my data. So I'm going to describe that process in this presentation. And along with this, um, I also used some elements of heuristic research. This was a self-study um, participant of one, myself. So this is very preliminary work. Um, using uh, very open-ended methods of research. And um, I'll share a bit about my process of using a specific approach called um, creative synthesis to really kind of unite the findings that um, came out of my research and um, to really kind of capture this phenomena of virtual painting. Okay, so in this study, I aim to explore the unique qualities of virtual art making, and I really want to focus on embodied experiences of art making. So what are the sensations that are coming up for me physically? Um, what are the aesthetic qualities of painting in VR? Um, also, what was coming up for me cognitively and effectively? And then also to look at, you know, what are some directions that we could go in terms of, um, in terms of, um, using VR for uh, therapeutic experiences, as many other presenters have talked about today. So maybe this will add a little something to that um, research as we all move along together. So I generated my virtual reality data using an app called CyberPaint. And this was created by an artist named Sterling Crispin. And he created this app with the intention to not make a realistic art studio, but to really kind of um, maximize unique qualities of uh, working in virtual reality and kind of um, really um, creating these tools that go beyond what we can do with um, traditional paints and other plastic media. So you'll see in the photo, um, that's me, wearing a Google Daydream headset, which I chose to use for this study because um, this, this technology is actually getting to be a little more outdated, but it's very accessible as a result. So I found this headset online for about $50. Um, you use your smartphone and place it into the front of the headset and that becomes your screen. So really this was a very accessible way for me to engage in virtual art making at home. Um, there's also a very simple um, remote, I should mention. So this is not as advanced as some of the other, um, some of the other virtual um, headsets and technology out there where you have two remotes and things like that. This is a very simple um, trackpad and point and click um, remote that goes along with this. So um, I have some examples here of artwork that I created in um, CyberPaint, as well as response artwork that I would do following my virtual paintings to kind of get a sense of um, what, what's differing for me in these experiences. So here's some of the work that I did. 
and the response artwork was made with things like markers, pastels, um, just very basic um, plastic media. This one um, is um, acrylic paint for the response art piece. And then following my art making, both in VR and uh, my response art with plastic media, I would write reflexive memos and really try to tap into what, what was occurring for me, what thoughts came up for me, what were my experiences of doing this work. And then what you're seeing here is a table where I organized my responses and the artwork so that I could then begin to analyze um, what was coming out, what was coming out of my data. So here we have a very um, early concept map where I was just looking at initial codes based on my memos, based on the artwork, um, and really targeting, again, these embodied qualities, sensations, kinesthetic responses, aesthetic qualities, um, emotional affect, and cognition. And then the findings from my, my lived experiences of virtual art making included uh, these, these findings, which I'll describe. So the first thing that came up for me was this quality of um, immersion, which others have talked about. And I really did get a sense of that when I was painting in VR, where I just, I felt very laser focused, um, very present in the space. And I noted when I was out of VR and I was doing art making in, um, in a studio space that I would become a little bit more distractible. So maybe looking around, you know, if I'm, if I'm working at home, looking around my room, thinking of other things I need to do. Um, the, my, the quality of focus, I just noted, it was very different um, between working in virtual reality versus um, my usual work with plastic media. My sense of space, I would say, was definitely altered. So there were a lot less um, in terms of spatial limitations. I was able to feel like I was working a lot larger than I typically could. And I, I wasn't limited by um, having to go out and purchase a large canvas. So I could really like adjust um, the scale of things. I could work really big if I wanted to work big. Um, another um, experience that I really noted was that I could um, select the quality of light that I wanted to work in. So if it's like midnight at home, but I really want to do some painting in like a natural daylight setting, I could just go into that space and it really did a nice job of mimicking um, more of like a natural daylight quality. So that was, that was something I really enjoy about this experience. Um, kinesthetically, I did notice I think this also ties in with space. I was able to use much broader movements. I would find myself like starting to do art making sitting and then I would stand and I would notice that there was this engagement, um, this physical engagement that was happening for me that was a bit different from what I typically do in plastic media. Aesthetic quality. So this was definitely um, unique uh, in terms of my experience. Um, Using cyber paint, it was much harder for me to control the remote um, in the way that I would paint with a paintbrush. So I started having to really adjust my, um, my painting style to achieve what I wanted to achieve visually. Um, and so I found that being in this virtual space really invited experimentation for me. Um, I was able to use a range of different virtual brushes and really experiment and play uh, and start to, and I'm still working towards this, start to kind of create um, a style that I, as an artist, was happy with in a virtual space. But it was definitely challenging at first. And then along with that uh, was this notable sense of playfulness and um, just fun being in that space, but also um, and especially early on, the sense of frustration when you're trying to figure things out. Um, these are, you know, for people that aren't as well versed um, and for people that are just starting to become familiar with virtual art making, it's a learning curve. Um, so that was definitely um, something that came up for me. 
Also, there are some side effects. Um, others have mentioned this. Uh, I definitely had some experience with disorientation and eye strain, and at times that limited the amount of time that I could spend in VR. Uh, but this could also be, um, as the technology improves, this might become less of an issue, potentially. And some additional considerations in terms of painting in VR. Supplies never run out. <laughs> There's no setup or cleanup. So really, if I wanted to do some art making at home and it's late and I don't want to get things out, I can just put on my headset and kind of go into the space for a bit and kind of come in and out of that as I choose. So, you know, these. It, it, there's also um, a flexible quality to um, art making. You can click on do. You know, I, I found that I wasn't as fearful of making marks that, you know, then you in plastic media have to erase or, you know, paint over, incorporate somehow. I could just simply undo, redo. So there was some added flexibility there. But something that was definitely missing for me in my experience was uh, tangibility, that, that tactile sense that we get when we're working with art media. Um, you know, even the sense of the materials, the sounds, all of those different sensory qualities um, were definitely missing for me. The pressure, you know, of the, of the pencil or the paintbrush on the, on the canvas. Um, and so I started to question for myself, is there a way that I could start to um, synthesize what I'm doing in virtual reality with what I'm doing in my paintings or my drawings? And so I started to play around with this synthesis process where I would create paintings on canvas and I would create paintings in VR and then I would start to try to merge them. And I'm, I'm still, this is all very preliminary. Um, and um, so I'm still figuring out ways to kind of unite, um, I guess, the, the best of both worlds for me and my work. Um, one interesting thing that I noted for myself was that um, my painting with acrylic, my, my paintings with plastic uh, materials started to become looser. And it was interesting for me because I, I feel like this was influenced by my painting regularly in virtual reality. So due to the nature of the, of the software, I had to learn how to paint looser and more fluidly in cyber paint. And then I noticed that that started to kind of translate for me in my own um, paintings outside of cyber paint with acrylic paints, which I usually paint um, much tighter, more, um, more rigidly. And I noticed that I started to loosen up a bit. So I found it interesting how my work in VR and my work in, um, in outside of VR with plastic media, how they kind of informed each other. And so what you're seeing here is um, my, my acrylic painting and then the painting in VR and then I would print what I painted in, v in virtual reality because you're able to save things as um, photo files. And um, I kind of went back and forth with this, you know, fluid paintings in both mediums and then I would have to kind of very carefully work to cut these shapes out and play with them in different ways. So there's definitely for me a dialogue between um, the two media to make this, um, this kind of mixed media um, artwork. And then I was able to exhibit, uh, they're, they're very small pieces, so you'll see them far over, um, at um, an art exhibit recently and get some feedback on um, the initial work, which is also um, a very important aspect of, um, of art space research is getting that feedback on your artwork and, and the qualities of it. And um, that becomes another crucial data, data source. Um, so some final thoughts that I, that I have. Um, there are definitely challenges um, to navigating virtual reality. We, we hear a lot, um, or at least in the readings that I've done, um, there's this a lot of discussion about how intuitive VR is. Um, but it can also be really challenging. And um, as we move forward, as you know, as art therapists, um, I've also thought about this from the standpoint um, of being an art therapy educator. You know, trying to um, share this um, 
share this technology with students. Uh, we need to become digitally literate in order to do that, in order to share with our clients, in order to share with students. Um, and so I think that for me and possibly for others, using um, arts-based research methods really helped me to begin to um, become more digitally literate understand um, my own responses, my own process of using virtual painting and, um, you know, help me to figure out ways that I can now move forward in terms of, um, you know, synthesizing uh, virtual reality with other media. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, I uh, would love to um, hear from others that are interested in this work. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out to me via email. Thank you. <laughs> Katrina. Yes. I was wondering if I could stand close with you. Sure. And maybe do a question, question and answer. Yes, all right. Impromptu, yeah? Sure. It takes 10 minutes, 15 minutes, kind of see what what people are thinking. Yeah. Um, if you want, we can stand out a little bit. Oh, sure, bit. yes, thank you. Tell me where to go. <laughs> I'm gonna stand close to you, because the mic. Oh, the mic, we'll yes, that's okay, mic. we're friends. It's all right, it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? I know uh, for the Philly Hive, we've really been sort of um, trying to make up for a little bit of lost time in the beginning. Um, so I kind of want to pump the brakes a little bit right. and uh, uh, distill and kind of take some of this in. Mm -hmm. um, and especially what you were just sharing, because there's a lot of layers to it. Yeah. Um, and there might be elements that, um, you know, we've been talking about artistic practices, clinical practices, mm -hmm. and now moving into research practices. Yeah. And they're distinct, um, not, they overlap, but sometimes they're very right, different. Right. So I don't know. Um, would anybody like to just sort of make preliminary comment, questions? Um, um, I'm thinking aloud, so I'm yeah. your question Go and for I'm it. thinking. <laughs> Thank you. So it's really interesting, um, very interesting work, um, some of the other as well as this one. Mm -hmm. I am curious about in virtual space, are you able to choose the mediums? Like um, I see you see saying that it was very fluid. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm thinking right now is like, um, like we used to do paint, you know, earlier in the day. Right. Would you choose like, you know, a pencil or a brush? Um, now I'm thinking, thinking about the ETC, would there be a space to, you know, choose fabrics, mm -hmm. but in the virtual world? So I'm curious how it's like, mm -hmm. I'm very new to this. So right. Would love mm -hmm. to know your thoughts. Right. No, that's, I mean, that's a great question. Um, the app that I used in this study um, is not quite as, um, I'm trying to think of the right word. There aren't, a, there, there isn't a broad range of tools. It's definitely more focused on painting. However, um, there are programs like Tilt Brush where um, there, the the uh, the brushes definitely, there are ones that um, have more of a flowing kind of quality. Um, there's also a sense of, at least when I've used that, um, which I, I haven't used it as often as I've used cyber paint, but almost like a sense of being able to kind of sculpt things. You're able to kind of really walk around and navigate, um, walk around things that you've drawn, and it, it gives you that sense of creating a sculpture. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas, and I think this is one of the important things to, to think about is these different apps, they all have different um, qualities in terms of what you can do. So for me, it was very much like a studio, or you could actually be in space or a desert, but I preferred the studio space. Like you're, you're working on a canvas, but yeah, there, there's also, I don't, the name escapes me, but there's one that's more sculpture. Mm -hmm. like, um. Is it called Sculptor? Yeah. I think it's called Sculptor. I use one on my iPad, but I, yeah, I can't remember the uh, names of it. But yeah, yeah, you can sort of. It's like clay. You can really sort of manipulate it. Is it like a wheel? Mm -hmm. There's one where yeah, where mm -hmm. you can work on a wheel. But I love the idea of fabric, uh -huh. and um, for me, sometimes the VR tilt and different programs, they're yeah. sort of stiff, like tape yeah. balsa wood. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know comes to mind. There's not good splash or like flutter like in a fabric or something that um, bunches up and right. has that sort of tactile. It's very interesting. I'm sure it's coming because again, we're in the beginning of uh, so much of this as yeah. far as um, sensory um, integration and sensory feedback. Yeah. So it's fascinating. I did, I did want to mention too on that, that 
that ha kind of haptic feedback, and I, I mean, you can look on online. I've watched things on YouTube about um, the gloves that they're making mm -hmm. that really give you that sense of pressure mm -hmm. and things like that. So my 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 uh, the the things missing in my experience in terms of tangibility, I think the tech is starting to catch up mm -hmm. very quickly in terms of being able to provide a more um, tactile experience through thing through um, gloves and other types of um, additional things you can have. Did you know virtual reality was first created at a glove in mind? The no. virtual reality object and experience was a hand. It was in the <gasps> 1960s. Oh my gosh. MIT no. up in Boston, Massachusetts. That's yeah. amazing. I didn't um, know that. Gen I want to say, I want to give credit now. Jared Lanier okay. was one of the early developers, and he's a writer and kind of philosopher. Huh. Um, of many things, but um, about virtual reality and sort of the trajectory that it's taken. Wow. Really interesting uh, man, Jared Lanier is his name. There's a couple of YouTubes and interviews, and there's some great books. Um, he's sort of a visionary wild man um, and deeply, <laughs> deeply intelligent about, uh, you know, his craft um, of uh, digital media and mathematics and oh computer gosh. information and, and just sort of the collapse of it. And he was a goat herder and, you know, <laughs> lived, in a, a few things, lived you know. in a hexagon in New Mexico. Yeah, so. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> things like that. <laughs> Other questions, comments? Jason. Curious, can uh, audience you? members, sorry to interrupt you, Jason. Can they hear the question, Arun? Uh, Should we move closer to Jason or get Jason to come? Oh. Make sure that mic doesn't oh, do yeah. that yeah. thing. That's we had good. trouble with the mic this morning. So. Oh, OK. Sometimes the mic has a feedback. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't mind repeating the question today. Yeah, Katrina, hi. hi. Uh, I am interested in your pro your hybrid process between your, I don't know, what did you call the, the, the I'm going to give you a little space. Oh, sure, sure, sure. The duration, sure. the time, uh, the loose painting mm -hmm. with the um, use of the. Oh, with VR and then VR with, space. yeah. And how you went about that. I'm curious if you thought um, additionally about maybe where you would, where you would go. In that I know, and that's kind of where I'm at now in terms of my my own future research. That's something. This kind of the synthesis or fusion. I've kind of been calling it on my own of virtual media and 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 painting or whatever. You know, even in those in those images. I'm going to just skip back to one. Um, you know, I kind of went back and added in, you know, like these drawn elements as well. And um, I am not sure where I'm going to go. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Um, it, it's definitely um, the, way, the way that they informed each other in my own artistic process was unexpected for me. And I, there is, there is one thing that I, that I have been thinking of and I've seen it done. I think actually the creator of the app, um, he has printed, and I'm not sure how he's done that, so I have a bit of an, a learning gap I need to fill here, but he would create these paintings in cyber, cyber paint, and then he would get them printed, and they would be on these large-scale canvases so that they could be exhibited. And I loved that idea, um, but I'm not sure how to do that myself. So my, my printing was very much, you know, just on like a typical printer <laughs> using eight, eight, you know, and a half by 11 printing paper and kind of cutting and, and assembling. And I would love to, um, to learn more about that process so that I could then further integrate other media um, on maybe larger scale um, paintings done in VR and then adding art media with that. So it's, I'm, very, I'm very open to other people's thoughts at this point. Um, and I'm open to collaborating because I'm very excited about this. So thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh, yes. Now, in in relation to 3D printing, with cyber paint, um, it's very much, since it's very flat, it's, it's like you're just painting on a canvas in a virtual space. Um, I... I think with the sculpting software, that would definitely be a very interesting way to go to then get things printed and kind of work with them. And yeah, that's really, that would be really interesting. Huh. Very cool. Thank you. No, not enough time. Um, 
Will you be able to stay for the, the round table or the Q&A yeah, discussion? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm curious sort of like where your work sort of fits into the other uh, persons and uh, projects. So sort of um, thank you, Katrina, very much. It thank was, you. It was quite beautiful. We um, should have done a more thorough light check. We were kind of struggling with the exposure. Ah. And just so the audience knows, we'll be able to sort of update her um, performance as it were we'll sure. work with you to kind of make that make that a solid thing it sure. looked good and it sounded good it was just the it was hard to read the slides oh okay so sort of fussing trying to get the exposure right you know, okay like an av everywhere you should have taken a little bit more time to like set, set the tones. this is all new I know. this is all new we're so experimenting yeah and michelle wood said it earlier we're definitely experimenting yes it's all um, but thank you so much thank for your you presentation. yeah so, really wonderful Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>